Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 30th of September with me Patrick Munley. Looking for a busy week of top tier data in the US this week with more information to assess the state of the US economy. Key releases include Tuesday's factory activity gauge, the ISM manufacturing index, which had surprised with a contraction in August. Weakness is expected to continue with another sub 50 reading market consensus. The ISM non-manufacturing index is due Wednesday, and the services sector is expected to remain supported by robust consumer demand. As usual, the official gauges were also accompanied by the concurrent release of the final readings of market PMIs for both the manufacturing and services sectors. In addition to the PMI readings, the official job report comprising of non-farm payrolls, unemployment rates and wage growth alongside is due on Friday. Markets look for the nascent softer trend to continue to develop. The week will be wrapped up with US trade data, with US dollar strength and trade negotiations continuing to weigh on non-oil exports. So now we have an understanding of the fundamental drivers for the week ahead. Let's take a quick look at what the technicals are saying. The dollar index has duly retested prior cycle highs towards the 1930 area. We've been unable to take those out at the current advance and if we stall here there's the potential to put in quite a meaningful double top note the momentum divergence that continues to weigh and as such if we fail to break new highs here break new ground to the upside then i'll be looking for a pullback a corrective phase back towards the 9750 area however if we do take out the current cycle highs then i'm looking for the next phase of resistance to occur at the 9970, which represents the yearly R1 pivot. I will be looking for bearish reversal patterns in and around this level to set short positions, again looking for a corrective phase back to test this 9750 support area. Whilst we're checking in with the dollar, let's take a look at what gold's been doing. Gold duly tested up to the anticipated resistance in the 1535 area, and as such, sellers stepped in. We now see the potential for an equality objective down at the 1460 area. However, if we fail to take out the support in the 1480 area, look for further consolidation and likely retest of offers back towards the 1535 level. In Canada, a pair of releases, one old and one new, will restore a bit of interest in the domestic calendar. But external risks are likely to continue to dominate market influences. First up will be what happened to the GDP growth in July. Trade figures for August are due on Friday and will advance understanding of the impact of the global weaknesses. The loonie has continued to consolidate in a relatively tight range between 133 and 132.50 for most of last week. As 133 continues to act as resistance, then I'm anticipating a test of the equality objective down towards 131. However, if we hold the range support at the 132.50 and can't track lower, then I'd be looking for an equality upside objective to retest prior cycle highs at the 133.80 area. In Europe, the main data to watch out for is Monday's employment data, which has started to trend lower. Tuesday sees manufacturing PMI with recent German weakness likely to weigh. Thursday will see the services PMI readings. Once again, labour market strength likely supports in the services sector. The Euro broke to new range, uh, new year lows um, this week, testing down towards support at the 109 area. And we consolidated within the test zone that we placed when we made the Thursday low. And we have closed with an inside, bearish inside bar on Friday. However, if we can hold that potential double bottom there, then I see the like, then I see a test of the Descending trendline resistance at the 110.40 is the next upside objective. However, if we do take out last week's lows, then I'll be looking for a swift move down to test the descending trendline support down to the 108 area. Again, similar to the dollar index, note the persistent divergence from a momentum perspective, which suggests that we can still likely form a base here to test higher in the euro. Whilst we're checking in with the euro, let's take a look at what's going on with the DAX. 
The DAX held the anticipated support zone at the 12,200 level. As this level survives now, I'll be looking for a new high to test the 12,700 level. Once we get up into this area, I'll be watching for intraday reversal patterns to set short positions, targeting a move down to test the projected ascending trendline support back down at 12,100. Across the channel in the UK, the final reading of second quarter GDP growth is due Monday, followed by market PMIs Tuesday, some manufacturing readings weighed likely by the Brexit uncertainties. Thursday's services reading could also be hampered by political pressures, leading to potential recession concerns. Sterling duly pulled back from the resistance area highlighted in last week's analysis and we're now testing the anticipated support zone back down towards the 122.85 area. As this area acts as support there's the potential to build another leg of upside to retest the prior highs back up towards the 126 level. However a failure below 122 will be a bearish development opening a retest of bids down to 120. PMI readings make up most of the Asian docket in Japan. Aside from industrial production, retail sales, the jobless rate and market PMIs, market watchers will be paying close attention to the Bank of Japan's quarterly Tankan survey released Tuesday, which provides a gauge of the country's large and small business capex and general outlook, with both global and domestic weakness unlikely to support capex, particularly in the manufacturing sector. The dollar yen duly held the anticipated support zone of 107 and as it does there's the potential to complete a sequence now to test offers above 109.50. However, a failure back below 107 will extend the correction and we could see an equality objective test back down towards 106.50 before trying to make another leg of upside recovery. Down under in Australia, Tuesday's RBA is expected to cut the cash rate to 0.75% in response to global and domestic challenges. Friday, we'll see August retail sales, which will likely be softer than expected, although tax cuts could provide some temporary boost. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar has pulled back to test the 67 level as support. If buyers step in here, I still see an opportunity for another leg of corrective upside to test offers towards the descending trendline resistance at the 69 level. However, a failure below 67 would be a bearish development, opening a move down to test support to the 66 level. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing 30th of September.